Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to the new round table and welcome to our new YouTube channel. Check the place out, looking good, huh? <laughs> so, anyway, here's what we're doing. I explained it online a couple days ago, but I'm going to explain it for you guys one more time. We're going to do the round table on the YouTube channel once a month and then quarterly we'll go live. So, we will see you guys again. Uh, live on Zoom in September with the whole crew. But today what we're going to do, we have five presenters for you. We have Brian Saul, we have Mark Lawler, we have Angelo Clotta, we have Monty Noir, and we have Sabor Chan. And each one of these guys is going to take the um, yellow belt list, and each one of them is going to cover one technique off the yellow belt list. Now, in the past, and again moving forward in the future, we're going to cover one technique. We used to cover one technique. We're going to go back to covering one technique. But for this one round table, each guy is going to take a technique. It's the yellow belt list. We were having a meeting about this, and Mark Lawler goes, hey, why don't we just start at the beginning? Because every month we're like, hey, let's do this one. Hey, let's do that one. Hey, let's do this one. And Mark had this ingenious idea of being organized and doing them in order. So that's what we're going to start doing. But for the first one, each guy is only going to cover one technique. Okay, so today, for this portion of the round table, we're going to have Brian Salt, we're going to have Mark Lawler, we're going to have Angelo and AJ, we're going to have Monty, we're going to have Sabora. And on the back end, on the members only page, so if you're a member of the Brotherhood, you'll get to see the next five presenters, which will be me, Steve Stewart, we have uh, Dan Donfro, we have Mike Miller, and then we also have Lorenzo from Barcelona. So, if you would like to become a member of the Brotherhood, you can just go to www.brotherhoodkempo.com. All right. And with that membership, you'll get access to our members only page where you will be able to get the extra exclusive content. In the meantime, I hope you guys very much enjoy what you see today. If you do, be sure to like and subscribe and tell all your friends about our new YouTube channel. But in the meantime, I'm going to throw it away to Brian Saul. Hey, thanks, Dan. And it's great to be back. All right, the round table again. Um, so we are doing the yellow belt techniques, as Dan just talked about, and I am doing checking the store. So I'm going to take you through the technique, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. All right, so checking the storm is uh, a right overhead, uh, right step through overhead club attack. All right, so clubs coming in from 12 o'clock. This is a beginner technique. What are we talking about? We want to get off the line, don't be there. So you're going to step to three o'clock, all right, with your right foot, and then the left foot drags into a 45 cat stance facing a 45 degree angle. Okay. When you go to nine o'clock and then point that into your 45 degree cat stance, all right, you are now on a 45 degree angle of entry for this, uh, for your opponent. And that is where their open center line is. Okay, and as that is happening, as you're getting off that line, you're gonna do a right inward parry and a left extended outward block or check, okay? So it goes one, two. All right, now, cat stances are transitional. You don't wanna wait here, okay? Yes, you did just check the storm, but your checking's not done until you shoot this kick. Why is that? You're on the inside of their arms. When you, what's one of the rules we have when you're on the inside of someone's arms? You gotta break the height. You see that everywhere. We do it in lone kimono, you break it up. You'll see it uh, across a destruction. You can break it with both. You gotta break the height when you're on the inside. So we go one, two, no break here right to a front kick to the groin that brings their head down okay now you've checked their height okay after you hit this front kick you're going to land in a twist stance which gives you a line of entry for a side kick to that uh front knee pardon me i'm on a downward hill here to a side kick to that uh front knee and as, as you land you're going to land forward with the back knuckle make sure you strike as you land strike as you land okay this is your backup mass. All right, so we have right overhead club attack. Step to three o'clock, getting off the line. You're gonna parry, go into your cat stance on the 45, right extended outward block. You'll hear some people talk about seizing control of the wrist here. What are they, uh, in weapons they talk about? Um, divert, um, seize, and control. All right, so when someone's in a fully committed strike, <clears throat> Good luck trying to grab that. 
I mean, you might be able to pull off that if you're doing, you know, like obstructing the storm where you're actually dealing with the, uh, the force of the strike. But when you're just getting out of the way, that thing, you're not gonna catch that, okay? But what can happen is if this misses, they could reload and come in again. So that's why, another reason why it's so important not to take a break in your cat stance. Because if they do miss and reload, you need to stop that from happening. That's where that front kick will come in. The other cool thing about this technique is there's a lot of foreshadowing of things that you'll see in your other techniques. Um, I like to look at this one, front kick, side kick. There's a few examples of that in, in, in your techniques. I mean, you can think about um, uh, brushing the storm. You pick up the leg, right? Front kick, side kick, same idea. Now in checking the storm, you're doing it with the same leg, the same sequence. Also look at the fat pattern of the footwork is another kind of nice parallel. In checking the storm, we're going over to the side and then up, all right? There's a whole lesson on that you see with uh, circling the horizon and leaping crane and gathering clouds, right? You, so in checking the storm, we went over and up. You have that same pattern in... Um, <laughs> Da -da -da -da, uh, circling the horizon. Mental block, you gotta roll with me there. All right, so when that punch comes in, you're going over, right? And then up. In Leaping Crane, what do you do? You go up and then over. And then you got Gathering Clouds where you go one, right? And you're going up and up. So you have that uh, whole sequence of footwork and you start to see that in some of your yellow belt techniques. Now, in checking the storm, you do it on the other side. But is really this so different than this, right? Same pattern, just on the other side, change up a weapon. All right, I think I'm probably over there. Oh, hey, 509. All right, I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Mr. Lawler now. Thanks everyone, great to see everyone. Um, we're back, uh, enjoy the new format Dan described and I'm looking forward to seeing everyone in the coming, uh, well, I was gonna say in the coming year. This year, we're in June. Take care, everybody. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Brotherhood Roundtable. Uh, I'm Mark Lawler, my wife, Gail. Uh, first, wanna thank Brian Saul for um, his presentation today. Good job, Brian. I'm going to be going over the technique attacking mace. Okay, which, uh, as everybody knows, is a yellow belt technique. A lot going on in uh, attacking mace, uh, particularly the checking principles that are applied in that technique are uh, very integral to Kempo and checking principles we use uh, in many other techniques and even in sparring, I would venture to say. Uh, it is a defense against a step through right punch. I'm just gonna go through this step by step and uh, talk about some of the things that are contained and we'll go from there. Uh, number one, the technique starts by dropping back and executing an inward block. So you know, whenever we drop away from something, we're gaining a little bit of time. You move towards something, you're speeding it up, it's more dangerous, takes a little more expertise. Now, the technique is generally taught with a thrusting inward block could also be done with a hammering inward block. It depends on your point of origin, okay? If my hands are a bit higher and Gail sets up the punch, I can throw a hammering inward block, but I wouldn't do that obviously with my hands down. I would have to raise them and throw it first. So uh, generally when we go back, we're throwing that point of origin thrusting inward block, right hand chambering traditionally back to the hip. Uh, one other word on that, this doesn't just apply for blocks, but other things. Direct versus ideal position, meaning ideally I would love to have my arm up so I could crack her in the arm and inflict injury. Um, but ideally that's not always the position you're in. Direct position is moving from wherever, from wherever you happen to be. So in this case, if our arms are down, we're moving from that direct position. May not be the position we want, but that's what uh, we're forced to do. 
All right, so I'll start moving through this again. I'm gonna have Gail set up. If she comes with the right, and I throw my thrusting inner block again, we go above the elbow, obviously, for uh, checking purposes. This is taught as just a full out karate reverse punch. I'm gonna go to a forward bow and bam into the body here with that uh, traditional reverse punch idea, pivoting into that strong forward bow. I'm going to hook over the arm. Oh, by the way, first, obviously, here's our first checking uh, uh, principle that we're using here. You're gonna get yellowed up, okay? Keeping the hand to fly back on you. We're over hooking and we're gonna apply this pull kick. So I'm not just gonna pull the arm straight, I'm gonna pull it down on a diagonal like this, okay? Now, we do that over and over again. We do it in Lone Kimono, um, on and on. Even some of the uh, sparring techniques, say for example, the B1A, some of the Kempo sparring, although sometimes the feet positions are different. The idea is that when you check those dimensional zones, height, depth, and width, right? When you check two, you automatically get the third. So in this case, we're checking height and width. And by doing so, we're checking the depth as well, okay? Same thing we do when we drive the arm down on one kimono. And I'm sure you can think of a lot of other examples. Okay, so from there again, my thrusting inward block, full out reverse punch. But really, frankly, if I hit somebody like this, or any of you guys hit somebody, we're going to probably go back a little bit. If they don't, I'm probably need to go back and learn how to punch again. <laughs> so I'm going to overhook, and as I pull that arm, she's going to receive a roundhouse kick into the guts. And I'm going to slide down the leg. I know the camera can't see here. But I'm in contact with her leg, okay? So this is to say, I'm not gonna kick and then step over here. I'm leaving an entry to my crotch, right? I'm literally gonna slide down in leg check position there uh, off of that kick. Now I know that's a roundhouse kick. Obviously there's a si size disparity here. That could also be a knee or uh, something I've done in the past for similar moves is just a straight on shin blast into the guts. That's particularly nasty too. Um, all right, so from the top, if you please. All right, so thrusting inward, full out reverse. She's going to back off a bit. Wham! Slide down. I'm checking that knee. And here we have a three-quarter punch into the rib. Okay, three-quarter punch. Simply if I take my arms as they hang and just raise them, you know, they're not horizontal, they're not completely vertical. We're about a three-quarter. Uh, that contours the ribs uh, very nicely. Um, now I've seen that done with an uppercut. I've seen it done this way. It's all good. I happen to like the three-quarter punch, particularly that close. All right. Um, from there, it seems a waste not to finish with evading storm. Because if you look at this technique, as far as motion, it is evading the storm. Matter of fact, uh, Sabora and I, our sensei, Joe Palanza, we, we had um, this technique didn't get taught. It was considered to be redundant because of motion existed in evading the storm. Okay? Um, so, you have whatever you think about that. I think that was the reason for not learning it, but it, it is right there to follow up. So, I will put that in here at this point. She will come in, thrusting inward block, full reverse punch. Pull kick, shin blast, come down three quarter. Now I'm just going to drive into that thigh, boom, and then back to the Achilles. And those last two moves aren't in the technique, uh, but I just thought I'd include them because they're right there. So that is attacking mace, Kempo yellow belt technique. Um, at this point, I'm going to throw it to my good friend and brother Monty. Uh, so yeah, we'll salute you out. Hope you got something out of it, you guys. And we'll see you on the next one. Greetings, brotherhood. Uh, this time it's going to be on video, so hopefully everything turns out okay. Uh, before we start, we always say thank you to all the frontline workers for all the hard work you guys are doing. You saved our lives. And the technique is massive aggression today. So we're going to go over the different uh, areas that i like to address about it that I notice in different schools, uh, wherever I go, and uh, I'll share that with you. 
Okay, so the technique calls in for somebody's grabbing you and pulling you. Maybe he's pulling you, maybe he's gonna give you a headbutt or something, more likely, because both of his hands are tied up. So the main thing is gonna do either a headbutt or a knee, you know, it's possible. So our hands are always gonna be stepping out and say, look, I don't want any problem, okay? If you put your hands up, it gives the other person a kind of sense of security or a begging, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't want any problem. In the meantime, I, the way I, I teach it to my students, especially the younger ones, somebody's grabbing you from here and here, by you just raising your hands up, notice the motion, raising your hands up. This is two ridge hands going to the inside of, the, of, his, of his arm, okay? It goes right into the inside, and it's gonna open his wrist. So by you just doing this, you opened up the grab, okay? You got rid of the grab. So from here, and you do a palm right into the chest area, okay? So, uh, so as soon as he's grabbing you, I don't want any problem, boom. And then you can go from there into whatever technique that you want to do. Collapsing elbow, palm, and continue, okay? But in this situation, the grab is very strong. He's pulling you, his hands, then your hands then go on the inside, his grip is, was too tight, went on the outside, and you don't want him to get any closer. You're complying with him because he is pulling you, so you're in a state of compliance. You have no other choice except going forward, okay? So as you're stepping forward, the main important thing is you close your line of entry and prevent his face from coming to your nose. So we're gonna go. A four knuckle rake across his face as you pin all that happens in the same time and your line of entry is closed okay and hopefully you have canceled his uh, knee or whatever stances he's in okay so from there as he's grabbing you and you land okay now once you land this is gonna continue all the way down he's gonna drop drop his height cancel his height down and one time Mr. Palanis did it to me and I was right on my knee, okay? Because he canceled all your height, he drops all his weight. And if you have seen any of his seminars, he does this and then he does this. <laughs> and you can see the difference, okay? So you got your gravitational marriage, okay, behind it. As you pin, and then from there, now you can go into rotation. So you notice the stance, your toes are facing 12 o'clock. Because if anybody's pulling you, if somebody's pulling you, you're, you don't go into neutral stance, okay? So if somebody's pulling you, you're gonna step forward, but because you're a martial artist, you make sure that your line of entry is closed once you step forward. And then from there, that gives you the power of the rotation, and you go in and pull, drag, okay? And right land on his cervical uh, or his face, uh, if you do, I mean, uh, sorry, not cervical, but a cavical bone or his face uh, and finish from it, okay? So, I don't want any problem. He pulls you. Oh, that's another way that I got to do it. Okay, I do, I do a palm, especially for the ladies, because a, a fist is kind of hard. And if, he's, if he is good in head maneuver, he might skip the face, okay? But if you do a palm, you got that face, he lands right on his face, and then you continue with it, okay? So from there, you're gonna go, and then you go in and out, okay? And uh, now the palm, which the way I uh, like to teach it to, to some of my students, so it's more practical for me, and you go, and you land, okay, with the full power, and then you go in and pull forward, to the cavical bone or into the face or whatever target that is available for you. Now from there, that sets you up. That sets you up nice for a chop right into the neck area. You grab the neck, you pull, and you continue with the five sword if you want to. That's an idea, okay? Uh, with that in mind, I appreciate the opportunity to share with you guys. Hopefully I'll get to meet you, uh, see you very soon, and uh, salute. Become a member in the Brotherhood, it's like five bucks a month, it's well worth it. You can share your knowledge with us, we can share it with you, and uh, it's a plus plus. How's it going guys? Uh, brotherhood, how we doing? Uh, so we're picking our favorite yellow belt techniques. 
Uh, my favorite technique would probably be delayed swords, one of the first techniques that you learn. Uh, there's a lot of applications to it. Uh, let's go over the base real quick and then we'll play with it. So, uh, base technique pretty much. It could be done against a grab, it could be done against a push, it could be done against a punch, doesn't really matter. It's against that right hand coming in. Written version, I'm pinning that hand as it comes in, stepping back, blasting on that bicep, affecting the height a little bit, getting him off his base. Shooting my front ball kick into the groin, landing with my chop, okay? So, uh, first things first, off of a punch, very similar to do, all you're doing the same thing, stepping back, hitting that block, kick, and then chop. If you're doing it off the grab, you may not even let them grab you. You can actually get both hands in effect. So you see that coming, hands are up, you can actually use that double action here. Boom, kick, and then chop, okay? But uh, what I wanna play with mostly, uh, two different versions of this is uh, switching your step instead, instead of the left foot, stepping back with the right foot. And the reason is, on that grab I step back, I'm pretty much wide open. It's a basic technique, but we're leaving ourselves open for that left, uh, uh, that left punch coming in. Now that people say, well, that's what that front ball kick is for. If you can't get that kick off, you are correct, but if you can't get that kick off, you are wide open for that shot. So uh, one thing that I thought of is instead of stepping back here and attacking the inside of the arm, why not work the backside? So we're gonna pin with the right hand here, and we're gonna step back and we're gonna blast on the outside of the arm with the left hand. What's that gonna do? It's gonna bring him around in a circle. You're gonna get a hyperextension. If you don't get the hyperextension, you're gonna get a shoulder rotation out of it. Okay, so either way, he's gonna be moving in this direction. From there, as you bring him around, he takes that step. You're in a perfect line to finish the technique the same way. Front ball kick, switch into the chop. So it becomes more of a step through chop as opposed to uh, just picking that leg up. So now it's boom, kick and then we're shooting in with that thrust. Okay, very similar, you're kind of transitioning to a thrusting salute there. Um, another uh, uh, thing to focus on is the base itself. When we step back and we put that arm down, we're putting all the, ba all the weight on that front leg, okay? What I wanna do instead of just putting the weight on it, I wanna take the weight away from it. So it's very similar actually to um, what Pops did in Intellectual Departure. Let's just turn this way a little bit so we can see it. No angle towards me. <laughs> Face me. <laughs> there we go. So as that, uh, as he steps through, what we're gonna do instead of just stepping back, we're actually gonna hit this little bit of a shuffle step. We're gonna combine the kick and the block at the same time with that shuffle. And what we're gonna do is, as that foot is hitting the ground, we're gonna pick it up as soon as it hits, right before it hits. So as it comes, boom! I'm gonna turn up the circle and take that leg out which is gonna pull him out. And then now look at what stance he's in facing me. He's in a horse stance. He's got a lot of stability here, nothing front and back. So what you do, as that comes in, we're going up the circle and then we're just landing forward with that chop. He's gonna put him right on his heels, okay? If you don't put him down, you're in a good position to follow up. So one more time, we're boom, from here, flat, take that leg out and look, same thing. You have elbows, you have forearm strikes. If he's far away, you can land with your chop. A uh, couple different options, okay? So just like one more time, off the base, grab, step back, hit, front kick to the groin, and chop. You can change your targets as well on the base technique. Boom, we can go far knee. We can go inside leg kick. We can go here. A lot of different options that you can play with. Uh, other option, working on the backside, comes in, we step back, make him take the step this way, step through, and then finish with your chop. And then finally, the up the circle slightly as that comes in before that foot lands, take it out from underneath him and then send him back with the chop. So one more time on that last one, we're right here, whap, boom, and we land with that chop or that forearm strike into the neck. So just a couple different offerings to play with. Um, uh, delayed sword. Okay, one thing I wanna add to that, go ahead and do your second technique, the one where you go from the outside. Yep. From this position, if he does that hard enough, any attempt that I have to punch him is canceled. So I'm going to try to touch him. So he goes like, I can't. It, it actually, my body goes in the opposite direction. So that's one guaranteed cancellation. Try that as the, the attacker, and you'll see how that works. Yep, and as, cool. soon, as, that, as soon as that foot lands, whap, boom, coming right back in and finish your delayed sword. All right. Just addressing from different angles. Cool. Good. Hey, what's going on, Brotherhood? Um, this is our new format of what we're going to be doing this time is we're shooting videos. 
Um, what I have in my hand is a copy of the Big Red. This was the original manual that Mr. Parker put out back in 1972. I made a copy so I could carry it around and not affect my original one. Uh, we were told to pick our favorite yellow belt technique and expand on it. Uh, number 10 in this Big Red is intellectual departure. So it's no longer in the system. We don't know why, why it was taken out. However, I'm going to use intellectual departure because that was one of my favorite techniques that I learned as a yellow belt. And what it's against is a front thrust kick to the stomach. Now, why it was taken out, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't make sense. Let's get you on this side. The way the technique is written in the book, as the right kick comes in, I step back and I do a block. Okay? It's, it's a downward block, kind of like an inward block, but in a downward fashion. I don't even know. What would you call this? A wing, wing block. A wing block coming through this way. Now you're going to be going from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock, so it's kind of a diagonal block. So as it comes in, you're going to go in and take that out. From this position, in the original manual, it has you doing a rear kick to the stomach here, and then taking out the guy's left knee. And that's the way the technique is written. So as it comes in, it's a step back, one, two, three. Okay, that's the original way it was taught. So what I want to do is I want to elaborate on that because it's such a great move. If you're in this position, as I block, what I'm not going to do is I'm going to get a full-on leg, powerful leg, big muscle, a lot of power against a small forearm. So you see that matchup isn't that good. So it's hard to block a really solid kick with your forearm. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify the step back. We're going to take it from a fighting stance already in anticipation of the kick. As the kick comes in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant my hand down. And it's, what's important to do on this is to rotate that arm so that your palm is actually facing him. The reason for that, we want to do a correct inward block and using the two bones coming through here. If I did it flat, it wouldn't be as effective. It could get hurt. So what I want to do is shoot this. But instead of absorbing the block with my entire hand, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate around the pivot point. Okay? So I'm going to hit and up the circle rotate, which is going to open up his groin. As you can see, I got targets galore. Now, in the original technique, it says kick, plant, kick again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. As the kick comes in, I'm going to bring my left foot forward as I do this. What that's going to do is going to close the gap. Once I do that, all I have to do is a heel scoop to the groin. Okay? I'll try not to get you. So we're going to go here. One, two. And it goes right up in there. Okay? And at the end of the technique, he's going to fall there. I can do so many things from here. The ending is up to you. But what I want to point out is when you're holding that position, up the circle, shooting that leg from this position, right? Turning in and catching. So when you do it quickly, you're in this position. It's one, two, and there's that kick right there. Notice where his face is going to be. The actual technique doesn't really have anything as an ending. But let's observe and see what we can do with that. So we're in this position. One, two, there's an elbow to the face, right? Back knuckle here. I can do the California jump switch catch him in the neck. I can do a lot of things from that position. If I want to also, I can come here, one, two, take a step back, reload, and fire again. Either one of those techniques work. Another option you have, this from this position, is one, take the leg out, scoop, and back knuckle. There are so many options you have from this position, but the key element that I want to point out is when you get that block in, you have to make sure that you close the gap. I'm here, close the gap, lift up for the groin from here, back knuckle hit, hit, hit. There are so many different things you can do. So facing the camera from here, when you do that, you want to throw that block, but you also want to pivot up the circle, pull your foot in, and lift up. So it's actually one move, as opposed to one, two, three, okay? So let's do it together. So for me, as if, you're, if you're in a fighting stance, you're here. Even if you're from a regular stance, a guy comes in, you can still do that, but you're gonna do that little switch that comes in. Intellectual departure. Um, it's a great technique. It's against the ball kick, and I don't know why they took it out. I think, any option, you think why would they take it out? I don't know why. It's a very good precursor to uh, Circle of Doom and Rotate Destruction. It's exactly. actually the first thing you do in those techniques. Is you do that rotating destruction. taking out the first technique 
and then circle of doom, and then rotate and destruction. And then if you have another technique, it's a triggered salute. When the, you're coming in here, as he throws the kick, one, two. I'm going to get that kick in before that foot lands. So he's going to come in, pop, 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 and I'm going to hit him this way. Same principle applies here. When I hit that leg out, I want to catch him. When he drops his foot, I want him to land on my heel coming up. Okay, if I wait, he could tackle me. One, he could tackle me and I'm screwed. So over and over tackle me on this. So if I block you, and go. I pause, oh, he's got me. He can do a lot of things. However, if I'm quick enough, boom, hop, right when he's getting ready to do this, he's gonna do this because I've untacked him. That's gonna give me distance to, to evaluate what I wanna do. Back knuckle hit, one, two, three, four. Take out, sweep, hit, back knuckle. The choice is yours. So intellectual departure, that's my favorite technique in yellow belt. Um, I hope you got something out of that. It's very simple, very short. Anything you want to add to that? All right, there you go, guys. We'll see you later. Hello, everyone. Salute. This is Sabora Chan. So my portion of the technique uh, today uh, for sharing with you guys is sword and hammer. Sword and hammer is the number 10 technique on the yellow belt list based on uh, Mr. Parker's infinite insight into Kenpo book number five, okay? So sword and hammer calls for a left hand, right shoulder grab from behind, okay? Your opponent can stagger from, you know, maybe your uh, right rear flank or directly uh, behind you, which is your six o'clock uh, position. All right, so from here, the left hand shoulder grab from behind, we pin, we step into him, turn as we chop to the throat, and then load down your uh, hammer fist and strike to the groin, and then cover out. You can't get any more basic than that, okay? So, once again, we pin, step straight back, turn into him, chop, and hammer, okay? What if he staggers uh, beside us to our right rear flank versus directly behind? Same thing, we're gonna pin, step into him, chop to the throat, drop your height slightly, hammer fist, okay? All right, so very simple. All right, so to help me today, I have Mr. Jason uh, coming over to help me with uh, sword and hammer. All right, so for sword and hammer, uh, the grab could be directly from behind, okay? That's not direct, that would be <laughs> directly from behind. This would be off angle or your right rear flank, okay? So the technique could be uh, one of the two positions that your opponent can be in, as I explained earlier. So let's say uh, by the book he is at an angle like that, oh, like that, he grabs, okay? What you guys do is as I step uh, back with my right, chamber your, uh, your, your right hand, hiding it, okay? And then as I turn towards him, Bam! That chop is gonna go right here. So notice that I'm positioning my body right into my opponent. My left hand is up high, checking, and then I drop down, drop your height slightly, and hammer to the groin, and cover. Very simple, okay? So watch it again. He is at my uh, right rear flank. I go back, turn and chop. So I wanna turn towards my opponent and chop right to the throat. Drop my height slightly as I hammer down to the groin and cover out, okay? What if he's directly behind me? Essentially, you're gonna be doing the same exact thing, except now your step is straight back, but then remember to turn into him with the chop, drop your height down as you hammer. In other words, do not do this. He grabs and you're just going one, two without dropping your height without turning and face your work, okay? So it's important to remember to do that. So the next thing that I wanna uh, talk about is that the versatility of uh, sword and hammer, okay? So he grabs, okay? So when somebody grabs, in this case, most likely they're gonna pull and load up that hand, okay? So if I'm quick enough as to pull, I shoot first. Good for me. What if he grabs, pull the punches in flight? So now my chop is gonna go here, okay, to get his hand out of the way, and then hammer to the groin, okay? Uh, one other thing, so if you look at the laid sword, okay, 
the lathe sword he comes in with the right, we go this way, okay? We kick and then we chop, okay? So the lathe sword is no more than sword and hammer in reverse. One, we start with our fist up this way into the block and then we finish with the chop. The other one, sword and hammer, we start with the sword and we finish with the hammer down below instead of up high. We're using it as a block, okay? Or you can say, well, this is maybe closer towards a capture twig moves or deflecting hammer, which would be correct, okay? So this would be uh, your, your sword and then this could be the downward block or the hammer fist from uh, deflecting hammer or capture twigs. All right, another thing that you can add to is pin as you step, you can shoot an elbow to his face and then follow up with the chop to the throat. Okay, so for example, from this angle, we go one, two, right into him and then hammer, okay? If you have the range later on, you see uh, obscure sword where now we're stepping away at an angle with our left foot and then we turn and chop because we have range this time why not shoot a front kick to the groin the bladder whatever target that you uh, elect okay so that's another relationship uh, right there the target once again is the same throat groin okay and to take it a step further um, in sword and hammer we're learning to use our medium range weapon because your knees and elbow or your short range and then your uh, legs would be the long range weapons so the next technique that it is related to is buckling branch okay so if you take a look at buckling branch as the left kick comes in we step back and we shoot the downward block okay so this time i have my right foot back uh, stepping back with the right but my opponent is in front sword and hammer i'm stepping back with my right I do my uh, sword to the throat and my opponent is in the back, right? And then we have the hammer, which is the last move of sword and hammer. It's also the first move of buckling branch, okay? Just like I mentioned earlier, it's also the first move of capture twigs. And uh, list goes on, right? So from here, but this time, the only difference is that we're using our long range weapon opposed to your mid range weapon. Okay, so we shoot our front kick. Uh, opposite of obscure sword, last time we kicked the opponent with our left foot while he is facing us, okay? In buckling branch, you're kicking your opponent to the same target, which is groin, but he's facing away from us, so his back is to us. Now we shoot a right kick instead of a left, okay? Now from here, Instead of chopping with your hand, we use our foot to do the chop, which is shooting that side kick. All right, so that's uh, the relationship, uh, uh, you know, real basic grouping that you can put together right there. Um, but there are others that, there's tons of them that are all uh, related to this. So once again, thank you for tuning in uh, today. Salute. Well, thank you very much, Sabora. Excellent job as always. An excellent job to all of our presenters. Thank you very much for uh, giving us your time today. So that concludes our first round table on the Brotherhood YouTube. Next month, we'll flip it. So next month, you'll see myself, Michael Miller, Dan Donfro, as well as Steve Stewart and Lorenzo Jimenez. So you'll get to see all of us and the members, the Brotherhood members, will get to see the five presenters that you guys saw today on the back end on the members only page. So once again, if you're interested in that, just go to brotherhoodkempo.com. Hit the join now button and then uh, I will send you an invite to the members only page and you have access to that as well as the hundreds and hundreds of videos. I know uh, Dan Donfro just put one up a couple days ago and uh, Sabora put one up recently. I put one up. Monty put one up recently. It's been going crazy on that page lately. There's a lot of good information, a lot of good old information. There's always new information upcoming. So we hope you guys very much enjoyed that and we will see you next month. Um, I also would like to thank the instructor for contributing their time 
knowledge and uh, skill on uh, this video or this show uh, today, uh, starting with Mr. Angelo Collado, AJ Collado, Mark Lawler, uh, Monty Noir, and uh, Mr. Brian Saul. Okay, until next time, we'll see you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, share this video with your friends, and um, see you next time.